Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome to Bridgewater Random High School for the 2019 edition of the Cape Cod Cafe Cup. I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside by Lester. Five and five records for both of these teams should be an interesting game. Right now we're going to kick it to the Bridgewater Random Marching Band for the National Anthem.
get underway here with the coin toss up coming. We want to be among the first to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving in this joint production of Brockton Community Access and Bridgewater Television. Once again, I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside by Lester. Hello. Matching five and five records, as we alluded to, uh, for each of these teams. Always a slugfest when it comes to Thanksgiving. Bridgewater Raynham has the edge in these games. This is the 10th edition of the Cape Cod Cafe Cup. Yeah, I mean, always a big game. Seniors last game, they always want to go out with the band and always just want to show out, so. Well, for the boxers, the the big names to watch are number two, Amik Watterson. He's put up monster numbers this season. Four touchdowns in the boxers' lone playoff win against Newton North. Uh, he's repeated that performance a couple of times this season as well for the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Of course, we're looking at number five, William Lombard, and the quarterback, sophomore quarterback, Austin Hartzell, among many others, a potent offense for the Trojans. The boxers wearing their visiting all white jerseys, white pants, black trim around the maroon numbers and the maroon helmets with the boxer decal on the side. The Trojans in their home red jerseys, red shorts with blue trim around the white numbers and lettering. Witnessed a lot of history in these two programs this oh, year, yeah. Lester. Oh, yeah. Among many other things, the 800th winning for Brockton High School uh, in program history. That came against the Severian Hawks earlier on in the season. That's and an amazing couple, milestone to pass. A couple weeks after wins. that, it was Dan Buron's 200th oh, win yeah. as head coach of the Trojans. Oh, yeah. So a couple of big milestones this year for each team. And, of course, when it comes to Thanksgiving, even though the MIAA has kind of rendered this game meaningless, it's all about tradition. It's all and about these, the history. And oh. these two teams show up to fight each other. Every single, every single year. Biggest game of the year always. Devontae Medley, number one there for the boxers right in the middle of the screen. He has led a very, very potent offense for the Brockton boxers. The boxers like to go spread. We've seen five wide receivers more often than not this season for the boxers in their RPO, that run pass option that you hear so much about. Amik Watterson, the guy to watch. Isaiah Laguerre on the end of rounds as well. And Brockton... Looks to get on the board early and often. Well, they're going to be receiving, so we're going to see how fast their offense is going to be able to hit right now. It is a Johnny Horn and Amik Watterson back to receive for the Boxers. And if you're the Trojans and kicker Liam Stewart, number 99, you want to keep the ball out of Watterson's hands. Oh, yeah. At any and all costs, some... Um, uh, kind of surprised to see Isaiah Laguerre not back there as well. He's the other big piece of the offense. And that ball falling off the tee leads us to the weather report for today. It is mid-40s. Not bad at all. The sun's starting to break through the clouds. But very, very windy. Very windy, very windy. Nice day to play football, but the ball's going to be moving a lot in the air today. And you can see now John McMasters, the senior running back, is going to have to Hold the ball on the tee to prevent it from <laughs> blowing off. And it's going to be John Buckley holding it now as the two players switch. The kick is handled by number seven. That's Sean O'Brien. And he goes down right at the 31-yard line. And that is where we will have the first look of the day at Devontae Medley and a high-scoring Brockton offense. The most points put up through the first half of the season, I believe, in 30 years. Sheesh. Devontae Medley. The weapons are numerous for Medley. Of course, uh, we, we alluded to Amik Watterson. Devin Forts, number 12. Trey Shula Hall, number 13. Navon Reed, the tight end, lining up on the near sideline in this close-up offense. Up and it's middle. Amik Watterson right off the bat getting... A gain of about 10 yards and close to a first down marker. I believe they will give him a first down. If you're the Trojans there, you're going to want to have to close up that defense a little bit. That hole was way too big for him to be running through. 
And Meek Watterson is one of those types of backs that love yards after contact. He loves getting hit and rolling off the, the contact. Here's a quarterback keeper for Devontae Medley. He's got a gain of about seven. It'll be second and three to go. Starting off the game with the hurry up, trying to catch the defense sleeping. Three wide, two to the far side for the boxers. They give to Amik Watterson, cutting to the outside. He's hit in the backfield and knocked out of bounds. It'll be a loss of about a yard. That'll bring up a third and about, we'll call it four to go. Ball at the Trojans 49 yard line. Meek Watterson trying to turn the corner on the outside as you can see on the replay. And just running out of space to do so before he hit the sideline. Now high snap to Medley. He throws for the first time. Complete to Trey Shula Hall across the 40. It's another first down for the Brockton Boxers. Now the boxers spreading it out. Noah Oluwu in the slot. Forts and Reed to his right. Medley splits out to the near sideline. He's gonna keep it Broken himself up. and is hit at the line of scrimmage and brought down, might have a gain of about half a yard. Tyler Newman on the stop for the Trojans. Medley getting the marching orders from head coach Peter Colombo of the Brockton Boxers. Coming back on that spread, they seem, you're right, they're gonna be in that all game, it seems like. They go four wide, read the lone wide out to the near side. Medley splits out to the far side. He's got a big gain, a lot of room, and he dives close to the first down marker. They might mark him a few inches shy. Let's take another look at that. The ability to cut is Medley's strong suit. And even after he gets his legs wrapped up, he's consistent enough and knowledgeable enough to fall forward, to fall forward and dive for a couple of yards. But this one oh, is getting back. backed all the way up. It looks like a personal foul penalty against the boxers. So that brings up a second and long, about 20 yards to go. Penalties have killed the boxers this season, especially against Franklin in the second round of the MIAA playoffs. Medley quarterback keeper right up the gut. He's got a gain of about nine. It'll be third and 11, getting tangled up downfield. Was number 74, Colvin Andrade. He does not shy lineman. away from contact. He wants all of it. These boxers aren't shy about lowering their shoulder and taking a little bit of contact, especially to move the ball forward. Three wide for the boxers, two to the near side. Medley in the gun, Olawu and Amik Watterson flanking him to each side. Quarterback keeper, now he's gonna pitch out to Noah Olawu. Big hit on the play. A gain of about 87. five. Logan Johnson. That brings up fourth down, and the boxers are in that weird gray area, Lester. It's too mm. long for a field goal, too short for a punt. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here. I think they're going to have to go with the pass. But the way Medley's been running, I don't know. They might just let him take the ball in his own hands. No sign of Isaiah Laguerre as of yet. Meek Watterson, man in motion. Medley back to pass, looking to the near sideline. He's got Navon Reed for a first down for the boxers across the 25 to about the 24 yard line. The boxers are putting together a pretty good drive here. Nice and smooth, they seem to be clicking on all cylinders coming off the first drive of the game. Navon Reed, the big wide receiver slash tight endy. 
starter for the Boxer men's basketball team as well. Oh, Medley oh. gets around a couple of Trojans. And he kind of gives himself. you that Lamar Jackson feel, the way he's kind of playing out there. He seems like he's just got complete control. You can oh, I see can hear just him now. Surrounded by Trojan backs and able to duck between them and that pump fake really got him free that was a nice move by him now three to the left medley gives off to meek waterson trying to pick up the extra blocking Bouncing waterson outside. to the near side throws the stiff arm able to turn the corner across the 20 to about the 19 yard line before being taken down inbound so the clock continues to run with 640 to go in the first quarter. I think he was originally supposed to go towards the far sideline with that. That's where all the extra blockers came in in the three big wide receivers. Yeah, he really just made something out of nothing there. That was one of the hardest three yards run I've seen in a while. Now four wide for the boxers. They give uh, quarterback keeper rather to Medley. He goes head over heels. Tyler Newman on the tackle. And it's going to be enough for a boxer first, first down. down. That RPO is just killing the Trojans so far. It's been Medley and Watterson doing the majority of it so far for the boxers. Shula Hall and Noah Olawu to the far side. Navon Reed and Devin Forts to the near side. Medley in the shotgun. Watterson now splitting out to the near sideline. Medley back to pass. Looking to the end zone. And out it's going bounds. to be caught by number 11, Matthew Buran, but out of play well over the end line of the end zone. Not a bad idea for the boxers, but Medley throwing it to double coverage. Ran out of room. Mm. You should have just tucked that or thrown it away, I think. The boxes are closing in on almost seven minutes on this drive. They are just controlling the clock. That's the boxers game. They eat up a lot of clock time. They love that run right up the middle. And that's Amik Watterson's specialty. Five wide now for the Brockton boxers. They give to Oluwu on the end around, throwing a stiff arm and he is wrapped up. He's got a gain of about two on the play. It'll be third and eight. Now they're gonna mark him uh, about a yard on the gain, so they ruled forward progress before he fell forward for the extra yard. So it's gonna be third and nine here for Brockton. They're still in four down territory. They're Kicking game has not been phenomenal so far this season. Four wide medley in the gun. Watterson to his left. Now throwing for Reed, who's got it. And out of bounds at the three yard line. And it's gonna be first and goal for the boxers from the three. Just a quick out, get some space. Trying to get an open area, try to get in the end zone, but beautiful key, pass. And the key there, Devin Forts, the man in motion, going across the field, drawing both linebackers yes. to the far side, opening up some room for Navon Reed. First and goal to go for Brockton. Reed and Olu to the near side. Shula Hall, the extra blocker. Watterson behind Medley. They give to Watterson. Touchdown. You're not going to stop with Meek Watterson on... A short yardage no. play like that, and the boxers are on the board. Capping off a beautiful drive. Beautiful drive. Right up the middle, Nothing over the fancy. shoulder. Pushing his own guy into the end zone, too. Get behind the offensive lineman, let the big guys do their job, and cross the goal line. snap the kick is up and the kick is good for Marcelo Tenorio the senior kicker 
for Brockton. Seven to nothing with 432. You talk about a good drive. Four minutes and 32 seconds left in the first quarter and Bridgewater Rams offense has yet to touch the ball. Well, we're looking for a, a big drive out of here. I know they've been on the sidelines waiting to get in, the seniors especially. Willie Lombard, huge game. Seven minutes and 28 seconds on that opening drive for the Boxers. Back deep is Anthony Morrison for the Trojans along with Willie Lombard. Morrison the junior, Lombard the senior. And Amik Watterson, the multi-talented back for the boxers is also the place kicker. Let's see if he can keep the ball in the seat. The wind doesn't seem terrible right now. It's going strong from the Trojan sideline toward the boxer's sideline. Watterson moves in, the ball stays on the tee and he gets off a good one all the way down to the Morrison nine yard line where he's deep. fielded by Morrison. Oh, Morrison. Up? Across nice the 30 to about the 33 yard line for the junior running back, Anthony Morrison. We'll I'll have the first look at sophomore quarterback Austin Hartzell. Wearing number nine in red, trotting out from the Trojan sideline. Tight formation, Hartzell under center. To give to Morrison on the end around, he lowers the shoulder and has a gain of about six yards on the play, a quick six yards. They look ready. They look like they've been waiting to come out and play some football. I don't think Brockton was able to read that play because it developed so quickly, yeah, Lester. Anthony Morrison picked up so much speed coming off the edge. He moved east to west, and then once he had the speed going, turned the corner on the far side, gain of about six and a half on the play, second and a long three. Now the pitch to Willie Lombardi. He's got a first down and hit hard. a loud hit across the 45 to the 47 yard line. And a first down for the Trojans. And that's really the, the power of the Trojans offense, Lester, the speed the of block, Lombard and Morrison. Speed. Yeah, those are just two amazing running backs. The fact that they can rely on both, have one out of the game rested, and the other one can still get the job done. Now the give to Michael Rubo, the sophomore running back. And is trying to get the rotation going is Dan Buron. Buron looking to get the Trojans a winning season, of course, getting his 200th victory as head coach of the Trojans earlier this season against Dennis Yarmouth. Now we've got a whistle. Ball is going to be moved back about half a yard. Too wide in the tight formation for the Trojans. The give to Lombard right up the middle, short gain. It'll be third, and we'll call it five. Quick moving first quarter, only two minutes and about 10 seconds left. The Boxers leading 7-0 in the 10th annual Cape Cod Cafe Cup. And a big play coming up right here, third down. The Trojans don't want to have to punt right here after the Boxers just went on that big, big drive and just scored. They'd like to capitalize. In a tight formation, only two wide receivers. Hartzell back to pass to the far sideline. Intended 
for Morrison. It falls incomplete, and that's a big stop for the boxers on Hartzell's first pass attempt of the game. Tough pass, throwing into the wind a little bit, but. Looks like the punt team's coming in now. Strong wind again going towards the boxer's sideline from across the field. So if you are Trey Shula Hall, who's back to receive, you kind of got to cheat towards the far sideline because that's ultimately looking, where this ball yeah, will end up. High snap, able to handle it in the air. Is number 11, booming he gets kick. off a Boom. booming kick and it's going to go into the end zone Boom. for a touchback. Booming kick for Matthew Buron. The fact that Matthew Buron kicked that away leads me to believe that that was originally designed as a fake. Yeah. And the high snap kind of ruined it. He had to jump and he really had to get some air to get to that snap. So first and 10 from the 20 yard line for the boxers looking to extend upon their lead. One minute and 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Very quick moving first quarter. Whistles. Oh, I think that's going to be on the Devin Fortes. I think he jumped early. Is a false start against Devin Forts. If you're Bridgewater, what are you thinking on doing on defense here to try to slow down this explosive offense? There's not much you can do, although the Trojans are will have a good chance to come up with a stop as Forts comes off the field now. If you blitz, you gotta watch out for the quick screen to the outside. If you don't blitz, you've got the running backs going right up the middle. You gotta make sure you catch them if you do blitz, because if that Mick quarterback Watterson gets on loose. the end around give, trying to turn the corner on the far side, he's across the 20. Takes a lot of contact and gets a big first down for the boxers. And it is going to come back holding against the boxers. Great run has to come back. He was not coming down. Only mission on his mind was to score that time. There you see the hold is going to be called against number 50. In the middle, that's Dimitri Texera, the senior offensive lineman, negating the big, big first down for the boxers. You talk about pure talent. Amik Watterson was hit by what seems like every member of the Trojans <laughs> on the field and still able to get a gain of 10 yards. That's just heart and dedication is something you can't teach right there. Backed up now 20 yards though, we're gonna see what the boxers can do. Ball is on the six yard line, Medley in the gun. He gives to Watterson, who's got a gain of about five to the 10 yard line, it'll be second. And a long, about 19 to go now for the boxers. The penalties have killed the boxers, especially in the playoff game against Franklin. Before that, a lot of flags thrown in the slugfest up at the Manning Bowl against Lynn Classical. Medley in the gun. Back to pass, he's in trouble. Quick screen to Trey Shula Hall, who's hit immediately, still on his feet, hopping like a turkey trying to avoid Thanksgiving, and eventually he goes down at the 10 yard line. That was senior no game. Brian Melino on the stop. Third and long, the clock hits zero, so the end of the first quarter, the boxers leading seven to nothing. It's gonna be third and long when we come back to action in the second quarter. 
Todd Cafe is where the bar pizza is perfected. 10-inch made-to-order pizzas baked in the original classic pans with cheese and toppings that stretch all the way to the edge. Since 1939, the Jamulis family recipe has never changed, and it never will. Cape Cod Cafe, 979 Main Street in Brockton, plus Bridgewater in Reno. And now, find our frozen pizzas at local supermarkets. Just ask your grocer for the Cape Cod Cafe, home of the world's most famous bar pizza. The 2019 Cape Cod Cafe Cup brought to you by, of course, Cape Cod Cafe. The trivia question today, what was the score of the very first Cape Cod Cafe Cup 10 Thanksgivings ago in 2010? I'm not too sure, but I want to say Bridgewater 27, Brockton 24. You're close. You are very close. The answer coming a little bit later on in the game, so stay on the edge of your seats. <laughs> Get to see how close I am. All right. This game has a lot of history behind it, Lester. Of course, a couple of seasons ago, Brockton defeating Bridgewater Raynham in the MIAA playoffs and then coming mm. here to lose on Thanksgiving Day. That's probably that was, the most prominent game. That was my senior year of football. I was uh, I was a part of that. The history in the Cape Cod Cafe Bowl just runs so deep. You go from the wing eating contest to Brockton High and Bridgewater Rainham both meeting each other at Cape Cod Cafe, sharing some pizza, and then of course football on Thanksgiving morning. You can't beat it. But the most impressive tradition going at the Cape Cod Cafe Cup of course is the turkey hat <laughs> challenge as Brockton punts away a knuckling kick and it's going to take a Brockton box across the 40 all the way rolling towards the 50 across the 50 now still going it's wow what a bounce that's all the way down to the 44 yard line of Bridgewater Raynham it originally touched ground at the 35 of Brockton so the turkey hat challenge between the great, the Emmy Award winning Newbie Ratto and myself. I have been preemptively declared the winner this year. I can see it. The turkey on your head. There's, Nothing there's, can beat there's that. There's no contest. There's no contest this year. <laughs> Pitch to Willie Lombard. Oh, he's Lombard got some room. Lombard with a lot of room across the 50 to the 45 the 40. Moving. Still on his feet to the 35 before finally going out of bounds. A touchdown saving tackle for Josiah Asari, the senior linebacker for Brockton. Big play, that's a big spike Bridgewater needed. A quick pitch to Lombard. He gets around number 25, that's a Johnny Horn. That block by Molino really got him open there. They are looking to convert now. Tight formation, eye formation, no wide receivers. They give to Lombard. Up the middle. He's got another big gain. They'll give him about eight yards on the play. It'll be second and about a yard and a half to go. Now they're going to be generous and give him a gain of nine, so it'll be second and one. The speed of the running backs for the Trojans starting to affect the Brockton defense. It's hard to tackle you can't see, man. Same formation, power eye. They give to Lombard. He's got a first down. Run into a brick wall, but enough to get the first down. That's enough for a Trojan's first down, and that's... One of the Brock Brockton weaknesses is if you just continuously pound the ball, and this is really against any team, continuously pound the ball, eventually the linemen, the, the linebackers, they're going to start to get worn out, get very tired, the and you're going to be able to blow past them, especially with the stable that the Trojans have. Mm. Yeah, the running backs, they can cycle in, they can create problems all Archie day. Looking to the end oh, zone. oh, it was almost, almost a amazing. phenomenal grab. 
for Ryan Rubenskis, the senior tight end. He grabbed it with one hand and had it for about a half a second. Let's take another look at that. Hartzell throwing the dime. And double coverage. Oh, oh. That's no, on he wants that if back. he makes that catch. Oh, yeah. Second and ten. Power eye. Hartzell under center. They give now to... Morris. Looks like it's Anthony Morrison. And he gets He's thrown down after the whistle on the Trojan sideline looking for the flag. No flag is going to be thrown. It'll be third down and about five yards to go for the Trojans. Big third down here for Bridgewater Raynham. Forward progress stopped immediately. He even ran into his own lineman, Ryan McCallum, number 56, before getting thrown down by half a dozen boxers in the backfield. Power eye again. Hartzell under center. The pitch to Lombard. Cuts it Turning up. the corner. He's got a first, first down. down. That's a nice run in there. They're going to mark him down at the 11 yard line. It's going to be first and 10 from the 11. Let's take another look at the speed of Willie Lombard. He's already across the line of scrimmage before Brockton's defense even reacts to the snap. Yeah, the quickness by those running backs is just unmatched. There's just so many things you can do when you have speed like that. Trojans looking for a touchdown, could technically get a first down. They would have to get to about half a yard out. Now a pitch to Lombardi. He hurdles a couple of down players trying to turn the corner. He's brought down at the three yard line by number four. That's Ted Tessa, the senior wideout, playing both ways for the boxers. And that play couldn't have happened without that huge block by Anthony Morrison off the corner right here. Right there. Absolutely. Bringing Flattens down him. Sean O'Brien, the senior linebacker for Brockton. Second. And we call it a yard and a half, just about two to go for the Trojans now. Right on the four yard line. Lombard and Michael Rubo in the backfield behind Hartzell, who's under center. One lone wideout to the far side. They give to Rubo, and he's in for a Trojans touchdown. getting the Trojans on the board. Play seemed to catch Brockton off guard. Seemed like they thought the ball was going to go to Willie Lombard. Quick, quick handoff up the middle. The way this drive has gone, Lester, you got to think if you're the Brockton defense that it's going to Lombard. The success he's had, especially getting to the outside, turning the corner, and getting upfield for those kind of short gains, the, the five to eight yard type plays and that's exactly what that situation was meanwhile the extra point is up and good it's seven to seven with 720 left we got so a the good trivia game. question of the Cape Cod Cafe Cup what was the score of the very first Cape Cod Cafe Cup 10 years ago your guess was 27 24 Bridgewater Random yep 23-21. Oh. Trojans getting the victory in the was inaugural close. Close. Cape Cod Cafe Cup. Of course, many of the production team was here 10 years ago for that game. And we were joined by big game Miles Jackson, who's my normal color commentator for all of Brockton High football. He would can't be here today, but wishes uh, that we say that he wishes everybody that is watching a very happy Thanksgiving and a blessed holiday season. 
The box kickoff return is up to the 30 yard line. John McMass is with the big hit there on the kickoff. And it was now the third drive of the day. And we are now going to go to the runner up of the 2019 Cape Cod <laughs> Cafe Turkey Hat <laughs> Challenge. Nubi Rato is down on the sideline. And we're back here. Um, first and foremost, Matt, that hat's god awful. I mean, geez Louise, terrible hat. I'm here with uh, Super Bowl champion from 2004, Sam Basong. Sam, talk about, man, how important is it for, for our athletes to play in this, in this Thanksgiving game? I think just it's part of, uh, you know, representing the, where you come from, representing your city. And for, for seniors and juniors, you know, this may be the last time you play. And uh, just the camaraderie that you build up throughout the year. It all boils down to this, so it means a lot. What are you seeing here in the first half um, for Broughton? What, what do we got to do to to take a hold and, and get a lead? I think it's just a, a good old-fashioned rivalry game. You know, two tough teams battling out, no one's trying to lose, and uh, this is what you have usually, a low-scoring game. And it usually comes down to one mistake being made by a team, and then the other team capitalizing on it, and that team usually wins. Last question, what do you think about the hat? Uh, it, you know, it could be better, but, you know, whatever works. It's, t it's turkey day, so whatever works. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> Back to you guys. <laughs> Back underway. The read option for Devontae Medley. He gets taken down in the backfield. So it'll be a second and 11 to go for the boxers. And there we go. There's your champion of the 2019 Cape Cod Cafe Turkey Hat Challenge. <laughs> Not even close. Not even close. Four wide, two split to each side, Medley in the shotgun. Now Watterson splits out to the near side for five wide. He's wide open. Medley's going deep, looking for Forts. He gets tangled up and it's intercepted. Dropped at the very end, but they're going to rule that. That's Brian Molina once again. Brian Molina had it. Let's take another look here. Medley shooting it downfield. That is. He's got it. That's an amazing catch. Brian Merlino, the senior running back slash defensive back for the Trojans. Never take your eye off the ball. Forts was looking for the pass interference call, but he was nowhere close to that ball. Merlino had the position to the outside, and that's where Medley placed it. That's a big turnover when gives the Trojans a, a chance to take their first lead of this game. They give to Rubo. He's got a short gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. Shot by number 10, Nolan DeAndre. Yeah, if you're BR, you just want to ride this momentum. Just came off a nice scoring drive. You want to take some time off the clock, score. Go into halftime, get the ball back, second half. And try to bust this game open. Second and seven to go. Morrison, the man in motion. The give to Lombard to the outside. He is hit immediately. Has a short gain of about three yards to the far hash mark. It'll be third and... About five to go for the Trojans. Seven fourths with the big hit. Let's take another look at that. Lombard getting around Navon Reed. Kind of a spin around type deal there for the senior running back for the Bridgewater Random Trojans. 4.15 to go now in the second quarter. Fast moving game. It's only about 37 minutes of real time. Very fast, a lot of running plays. Ooh. Morrison as a flag is thrown in. 
That's enough for a first down. The clock winds, so the flag might have come out inadvertently. First down for the Trojans. The pitch to Lombard trying to turn the corner on the outside. This time it doesn't fool the boxers' defense. And it's only a gain of about two for Willie Lombard. Reading that perfectly was Devin Forts. Among others, Kevin McCarthy was in on the tackle as well as Navon Reed. Power eye formation for the Trojans. Hartzell under center. Boxers jump, but get back on sides now. Morrison cuts it outside with the Morrison nice Morrison into off. the open field. Anthony Morrison's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Touch Trojans. <laughs> Anthony Morrison. He saw green, and there was nothing no one could do about it. He's taking it to the house. A 65-yard touchdown run for Anthony Morrison. Put the Trojans on top with 2.54 to go in the half. You can see him get to the outside. He's only got one man to beat. That's a Johnny Horn who gets big block by just Willie completely Lombard. taken out by Willie Lombard. And Morrison into the open field. Nobody's going to catch him. The ball is snapped. The kick is up. And the kick is good. 14 to seven Trojans, and we hear again from Nubia Rata. All right, we're here with some of the seniors. It's all right up here on the Bridgewater sidelines. First of all, introduce those this cheering for the football team. Talk about how you, about, what are you feeling today? Um, I just, I'm so grateful to be able to be a part of this program. I love cheer. I love Barbies. It's just, it's been amazing. I'm Bianca Rodriguez. I could not have said it better myself. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be let on I'm Billy Gavin. I'm so grateful to have been a part of this team for four amazing years, and I'm very sad to let it go, but this program is in such great hands, and I can't wait to see the future. Well said. Well, they're going to lead us off with a cheer. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone's all fired up here. Guys, lead us off with a with cheer. We are, 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 we are. We're going to Disney! Yeah! We're going to Disney! Woo! Hi, Mom! Newbie returning. That ball, that ball was ball. kicked as the ball was falling off the tee. Newbie returning to a familiar place is Amik Watterson putting together a oh. nice return here across the 50 down to the 44 yard line of the Trojans. And slow to get up at midfield is number 32 for the Trojans. That's John McMasters. It didn't seem like he was going to come down this on this run. And just right through much of the Trojan special teams unit. First and 10 from the 44. Couldn't get anything going on that play. to give now to Amik Watterson who's right up the gut again following the line of the hash mark and he's got enough for a first down for the boxers. And we see it again, Amik Watterson bobbled that ball and that's not any fault of Amik Watterson, that's Devontae Medley as we've mentioned all season long for the boxers having hesitation giving the ball off to his running backs. 
And it's led to a couple of turnovers. Now Watterson, uh, rather Medley spins off the initial hit that would have been a loss of about five. Instead, it'll be a loss of one as Medley is sacked in the backfield. Minute 30 to go. And Brockton calls a timeout. Getting Not around sure the- what was what was supposed to be going on on that play. Logan Johnson was into the backfield with a lot of speed, the big sophomore offensive uh, defensive lineman. He does play both ways. Fourteen seven Trojans. Brockton looking to get back on the board. With a, going with the spread here, Medley dropping back to pass, has Watterson. Watterson knocked out of bounds after a short gain of about two. It will be third and nine. We are now joined in the booth, Lester, by the 2019 runner-up of the <laughs> Cape Cod Cafe Cup Turkey Hat Challenge, Nubi Rato. Nubi, among many other things today, your hat's on backwards. Well, first and foremost, um, this hat and this person who's wearing the hat has an Emmy. So that's an automatic win for me, number one. And ouch, what the hell are you wearing? That looks awful. Jeez Louise, it looks more like a Christmas hat than a turkey hat. <laughs> it's a Dear God. holiday holiday turkey dinner. Medley goes down, down in the down. backfield. It's another sack. It's and that'll bring up a down. long fourth and about 12 to go for the boxers. So seriously, I was wearing the hat backwards the whole time. I didn't even notice it. It's yeah, been backwards. Right. It's backwards. It, it, it's, it's, it's looking. You got eyes in the back of your head, Nubi. Oh my goodness! Where, where's my floor director when I need one? Jeez Louise! Medley Thinking looking to make something happen on the pass, but good awareness there. there by Ryan Rubenskis to dive back from behind Medley and wrap him up. It's another one of those gray areas. Too far for a field goal. Too short for a punt. We're gonna see what they can do here. Fourth and 12 to go for the boxers. They go four wide, two split to each side. Medley back to pass, has some time, has some room. Up deep. the middle for Navon Reed. It's Knocked punched out incomplete pass. Bjorn. That was a good looking pass right there. Right on the money, Navon's gotta catch that. Excellent defensive job by Bjorn. Medley had all the time in the world. All the room in the world. He probably could have run that up for a big gain if he really wanted to. Nice play on the, on the ball by Buran. And what a nice punch by Matthew Buran to get that ball out of reach of Navon Reed. Man, I'm going to get out of here because your hat's blinding me. <laughs> so before I, uh, that's why you're some wearing sunglasses. Just, some things are just too bright for some eyes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, Matt, um, my condolences to your head, okay, and, uh, and, and keep wearing terrible shirts. It is the official kickoff of holiday sweater season, of which I've worn one every year for the last umpteen years that I've been involved with the Cape Cod Cafe Cup. So it's a turnover on downs. Bridgewater Raynham takes over now on the 35-yard line. We'll send Newby back down to the sidelines with his second-place hat. You can see very, very windy. It's, I'll say it's better weather than last year when it was about minus 10 real fields out there. But it's 45 degrees. Yeah, and that wind's blowing sideways. It's it's tough out there. You haven't seen the ball pass much, that's what. Up the middle. Refusing to come down. Lombard a gain of about five. There's 23 seconds to go in the first half. Folks, we have only been playing for about 40 minutes of real time. No complaints here. We'll get to turkey dinner a little bit early today. <laughs> oh, yeah. The running of the ball quick so run. much That's is That's Morrison a, right up the middle. Yeah, refusing to come down. 
I'll tell you what. Since since there's so much controversy between the turkey hats, we'll get one of those Facebook polls going, and we'll let the public decide who's got the best. That's hat. the fairest way, I think. You gotta let the public decide. I'm a man of the people. I know Newbie's a man of the people. We'll take a side-by-side -side picture. Maybe we can have you and Newbie out on the field at halftime and have the crowd vote on it. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Newbie was wearing his hat backwards for the entire first half <laughs> kind of tells you who, who's winning here. He wasn't that ready for it. Called by Bridgewater, random 17 seconds left to go. They're down on their own 45, 17 seconds, one touchdown, I mean one timeout. Get the first down, take a couple shots to the end zone. Bridgewater Random gets the ball back to open the second half. Ron's got a couple of timeouts left. So the move would be get the first down, take a timeout, take a couple of shots to the end zone, see if you can make something happen, have someone come back. Even down get within field goal range uh, for, for a potential three-pointer as the half expires. Hartzell back to pass. He's going to throw it up. And no, that was, intended for Lombard. He's got it. The first down and more. Willie Lombard's Lombard all the way down to the 21 yard line. And Six was, seconds left. That was Morrison back to throw that pass. So it was the direct snap to Anthony Morrison. And he finds Willie Lombard. Couldn't have worked out more perfect. BR calls their final timeout of the half with six seconds to go. And a big first down. So now it's, I think it's a little bit too long for field goal, especially with the win. So if you're quick about it, you got two shots to the end zone. You got to throw it up, have one of your playmakers try to make a play. If I'm BR, I'm trying to trick up the Brockton defense. We've seen no slot passes so far today. I'd throw it to Lombard or Morrison right in the slot. Let them run that crossing route and see if they can open up the middle of the field. Hartzell's under center. Six seconds to go, two wideouts, the I formation. Hartzell back to pass, picks up the extra protection to the end oh. zone. It's going to fall incomplete for Anthony Morrison. And the clocks hit zeros. That will end the first half. When you say escapes, Brockton escaped there, and they go into the half down by only one touchdown. Lucky Could have been more than that. One touchdown, yep. Well, oh. it's been an interesting half, Lester. A lot of runs, not a lot of passing. A lot of wind, and uh, as you can see, a second place turkey hat talking to Dan Buron. So we are going to enjoy a halftime show first by the Brockton High School marching boxers, and then the Bridgewater Random marching Trojans. We're gonna take a quick break for halftime. On the other side of the break, we'll have first half stats, and a lot of them. A 14-7 lead for the Bridgewater Random Trojans over the Brockton Boxers in the 10th annual Cape Cod Cafe Cup. We will be back right after we'll this. We'll be back.
Bob Pizza is perfected. 10 inch made to order pizza baked in the original classic pan with cheese and toppings that stretch all the way to the edge. Since 1939, the Jamulis family recipe has never changed and it never will. Cape Cod Cafe, 979 Main Street in Brockton, plus Bridgewater in Reno. And now, find our frozen pizzas at local supermarkets. Just ask your grocer for the Cape Cod Cafe, home of the world's most famous bar pizza. Hello and welcome back into Bridgewater Random High School for second half action between the Brockton Boxers and the Bridgewater Random Trojans, the 10th annual Cape Cod Cafe Cup Thanksgiving Day Football. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside by Lester. It's 14-7, to the Trojans leading the Boxers at this point, and we've talked a lot about tradition today. One of the greatest traditions in this game is the coaches and senior banquet at the Cape Cod Cafe, the, of course, wing-eating challenge and pizzas all around. You see the two head coaches there, Dan Buran, getting his 200th win uh, as coach of the Trojans uh, this season against Dennis Yarmouth, and Peter Colombo leading the Boxers to their 800th win in program history. That came against the Severian Hawks earlier on in the season. Lester, uh, your thoughts on the, the history, really, of these two programs and Coach Buran and Coach Colombo? It's just amazing, the the history and the history with the Cape Cod Cafe Bowl itself. Just knowing every year that Thanksgiving is just dedicated to you two teams is just awesome. And those two coaches are just legendary, so it adds to the, the beauty of it. Well, the second act of the 2019 Cape Cod Cafe Cup Challenge, uh, Hat Challenge, has come about. I have switched to dessert. Uh, I have now a pumpkin pie slice on my head. Uh, Newbie is still wearing the runner-up turkey hat. But he has it on forward now, so he does. it he, does he look a little different. He switched it around and tied the legs together under his chin because it is very windy out there. Uh, not as cold as last year. It was about negative 10 last mm. year with the real feels. And uh, today it's about 45, but very windy, the wind blowing from the BR sideline over to the Brockton sideline, and that has yeah, affected that. the play a lot. There's not been a lot of attempted passes so far today. Yeah, a lot of runs, a quick first half for sure. Hard to throw the ball out there when the wind's moving that fast. Well, the Trojans came up just shy of adding a touchdown in the final six seconds of the first half. They do get the ball back to open this second half. Thanksgiving football across Massachusetts. And we are going to go once again to the runner-up of the 2019 Turkey Hat Challenge, Nubi Rateau down on the sideline. Nubi. All right, guys, talk to both coaches. Uh, just their thoughts on what's going on in the second half. Here's the deal. Coach Bjorn says, you know, we got to stop third down conversions. Brockton is giving credit to Brockton, a great job in third down conversion, but they got to do a better job of stopping that. And the offensive line's got to be better. Turns for Brockton, Brockton says, listen, comes down to execution. They see they have the ability to actually score and do damage, but they're not executing. So it just comes down to discipline and execution. So let's see what happens in the second half. Back to you guys. Well, the execution has been good for the Trojan running backs, Lester, especially Willie Lombard and Anthony Morrison. Talk about their performance in the first half. It seems like Willie in open field is just doing whatever he wants and can get anything going for him. Combined with the speed of Anthony Morrison coming off the corner, them two in the backfield together is very dangerous. The boxers will kick away. They're wearing their visiting all white jerseys, white pants with the maroon stripe down the side, black trim around the maroon lettering, and the maroon helmet with the boxer decal on the side. The Trojans in their home, red jerseys, red pants with blue trim around the white numbers and lettering, red helmets with the word Trojans on the helmet. Always a pleasure to bring you this game, this joint production of Brockton Community Access Bridgewater Television. From the BCA side, it's always fun teaming up with Jeff Fowler, Mike Moriello, and all the crew over at BTV. Amik Watterson to kick this one away. Back deep are the two-star running backs, Anthony Morrison and William Lombard. High kick. High kick and spiraling towards the far sideline where it's handled by Lombard. He's across the 25 to the 27-yard line. 
And that's where we'll have the first look of the second half at Austin Hartzell and the Trojan offense. Hoping to get something going here on the offense. They've had a pretty successful last couple of attempts on offense, bringing the ball all the way down the field. Couldn't convert at the end of the half, but looking to get it going now. Give to, I believe, Morrison. Right up the middle, he's got a short gain of about a yard and a half. Brought down right at the 30 yard line. It'll be second, and we'll call it eight. As the sun has started to break through the clouds, See the shadows starting to appear on the field as we approach 11.15 uh, a.m. real time. Type formation, the pitch out to Lombard. He's hitting the backfield, and he's going to be brought down for a loss of about three. There was nothing you could get going there. The defense is in the backfield before you could even make a choice. Linebackers led by number 10, Randy Jean Francois, the senior linebacker. You can see just a gang tackle of boxers in to the backfield. Number 34 was in on the stop as well. That's Diamond Blakely, another multi sport athlete and a starting member of the boxers men's basketball team. Now, two wideouts to the near side. Hartzell back to pass. He's going to fall incomplete. Intended for Michael Rubo. Michael Rubo, the sophomore running back who was working his way across the slot. And that brings up a fourth and about nine to go. And the Trojans will send out the punt team. He had him. That's a ball that Rubo just has to catch. Yeah. He had nothing but green behind him. He could have turned around and made a play. Not the way you want to start the second half, but the defense should be looking to get another takeaway. Quick three and out is a spiraling kick. Makes its way to the sideline and finds its way out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Only a minute and 38 seconds off the clock to start the second half, Lester. Much different than the start, the seven minute and 32 second drive for the boxers to start the first half. And that's what this game's gonna come down to. It's gonna be a one score game. It's gonna be who can control the clock and can commit the least turnovers. Well, one problem for the boxer defense and especially the special teams is Johnny Horn, the senior defensive back slash running back. Here's a fumble. pitch that if they're going to call it a fumble, it's going to be returned for a touchdown Nick for Masters. the Trojans. What's interesting there is was it a forward pass and was it a completed forward pass? Mm. Very close because he was pitched into the side. Uh, I want to I want to say it was a fumble. The, the, the referees here. are going to discuss it now. Let's take a look at that. It looks like it was a I, forward that looks pass. Like a fumble. The refs aren't moving it back, so the touchdown looks like it is going to stand. A heads up by John McMaster's to scoop and score. Not often that you see Amik Watterson not able to get his hands around the ball like that. And what started as a disastrous start to the second half for the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Just a short uh, 20 seconds later, short of 20 seconds, 18 seconds later, and they have scored to open the second half. They lead it now 21 to seven with 10, 12 to go in the third frame. But right before that, we were uh, Mentioning a Johnny Horn, the senior defensive back, running back out for the remainder of this game, Lester. Uh, he is one of the many kick returners that the boxers have utilized this season. He had an allergic reaction to something uh, that happened before the game. Played through it in the first half, but wasn't featured very much. 
uh, he has been ruled out for the remainder of this game. And you hate to see that, hate to hear it. Hope everything's going good for him. So now to kick it away is Liam Stewart, the senior kicker and punter, number 99 for the Trojans. Ball stays on its tee and he tries to utilize the wind here and it's handled by Lakari Brown. He gets it across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. Diamond Blakely on that carry. Alright, Devontae Medley starting on the shotgun. Oh, we got a flag on the play, looking like a false it's start. Be a false start against the boxers and it started raining here on this Thanksgiving day. Rain Thanks. picking up and with that, let's uh, send it down to the sideline in Nubi Rato. And we're back here. I'm I'm joined with a very good friend of mine. What's your name again? Marcus, we talk all the time, we go way back. Uh, Marcus, first and foremost, uh, BR alumni, what, 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 what class were you? Uh, 2017. 2017, listen, talk about what did it feel like to be a football player and play on Thanksgiving? I mean, it felt great, you know, because this rally's been going on forever, and, you know, we won our game, so, like, we kept the streak up of winning, so, like, it felt very good to win at their home team, too. So talk about what are you doing right now. Uh, rumor is you over at URI? Yeah, I run track at URI. Long jumper, triple jumper at URI. Are you faster than me? Probably, maybe. Probably not. We can race right now if you want. If you want to race, we can race right now if you would like to. Listen, we might make history right now. Listen, he's going to get beaten by a person with a turkey hat. I'm not sure if you're going to actually really be proud of that, but that's what's about to happen. I mean, you can bet the turkey hat if I win, I walk home with it. I won't put the mic down. It's going down right now. Back to you guys. Newbie, you've already lost once today. Do you really want to make it 0 for 2 on the day? On Thanksgiving, especially. He can try, Back to pass. looking to pass, and well incomplete, intended for Devin Forts. What's interesting is we still have not seen the boxer's top wide receiver target, Isaiah Laguerre. Saw him on the field warming up before the game, but do not see him on the sideline or in the boxer huddle. And this wind combined with the rain's got to be nasty on the, the field right the now. The wind has started to drive the rain, and it's getting fairly ugly out there. Now Medley keeps it himself. Trying to turn the corner on the outside. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and 10, and Brockton will send out the punting team, led by number 87, Kevin McCarthy. And the Brockton offense seemed to be struggling a little bit to start, but looking to turn that around. Bridgewater's defense is looking nice and solid. So McCarthy back to punt. He picks up a couple of extra protectors moving in from the outside to line up a oh. pass marks, and he fumbles the snap, and it's going to be a turnover on downs all the way back at the 11-yard line. We're now joined once again in the booth by Nubi Rato. Nubi, you've already lost once today, and you're gonna challenge a cross country and track star to a race. What the camera didn't see is that I won the race, and he left because he was so embarrassed. So that's what the cameras didn't see. Everyone is sorry in the stand, that's why everyone's cheering. <laughs> as, as someone fresh in from the nastiness of the sidelines, talk about the weather out there. Can we talk about how you can keep a serious face with that on his head? I mean, how do you do it? You gotta Listen, get credit for that. There's nothing more serious than pumpkin pie. All right, especially with a large dollop of whipped cream on it. Oh, that's a whipped cream. Okay, cool. That's whipped cream. Now the question is, where did you get that? A great magician never reveals his secrets. Oh, okay. Just like I can't tell anyone where I get my jackets. <laughs> well, you already told me where you get your jackets. Well, no one knows or shoes. that. Or shoes. Or shoes. Can we can we talk about the outfit? that you wore to the NAACP gala newbie? That well, was, I mean, listen, I give credit where credit's due. That was probably like a 25 
out of ten on the on the one to ten scale on how clutch that that outfit was. The shoes were like cleats on the outside. <laughs> they were. It was it was incredible. What's going on with Brockton here? What's going on, guys? Uh, Brockton, I don't themselves. see. I don't see Isaiah Laguerre, so that's a big part of their offense. Mm -hmm. Of course, somebody else uh, that you have previously challenged to a race is Isaiah Laguerre's first cousin, Vanessa Clairvaux, who is an Olympic athlete for the country of Haiti. That's going to be awesome. I, I can't, I'm really excited to to see her in the Olympics next summer. So shout out to her. I know she's in Florida right now doing a lot of training. And I believe that she made four full trips around the track before you even got up from the starting line. That's the rumor. It has never been confirmed. <laughs> but it looks like the rain stopped, so I'm going to go back outside. <laughs> <laughs> it is third and, third and, and two. short. Third and two. They can get a first down here by getting to the two-yard line. And then have four fresh chances to get into Morrison the end zone. Morrison on the center here. Going to keep it himself. He's got enough for first down as he across the goal line. No signal yet. I think he's going to be just short. No, but it's going to be a first down on from about an inch and a half out. You guys upstairs here again. So I wish you guys and your whole family a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, newbie. It was a pleasure defeating you in the 2019 Cape Cod Cafe Turkey Hat Challenge. If you want the victory, you, you can have it, okay? My, my trophy case is getting, is getting a little too full anyway, so you can have this one. <laughs> Listen, let's all just remember Morrison that, with the touchdown. that on your Emmy is uh, indeed Anthony Morrison across the goal line for a Trojans touchdown. On your Emmy, I helped with the photography, so technically I, I should be credited with winning an Emmy. Well, whatever makes you feel good, Matt. It does. All right, guys, take it easy. It is now all BR. They break this game wide open, 27 to 7. The Trojans leading the boxers. Newbie. Yeah, the Trojans here scoring twice quick off the bat to start off the second half. That that turnover. That, that botched punt snap for Kevin McCarthy really killed the boxers. Coming on the hands of two big turnovers from the boxers to start out the second half. Liam Stewart, a perfect four for four on the day, and he gives the Trojans a 28 to seven lead. The boxers looking very short staffed on their sidelines, certainly not as many players on the sidelines that were warming up for Brockton. So kind of curious as to what happened to what seems like a, about a third of the boxing mm. Brockton team. I noticed that as well. Now Stewart to kick it away from the 40-yard line with 6.26 to go. Ball's falling off the tee. And the wind is driving once again. Ball out of bounds at the... Around 18 yard line, that'll draw the flag. So they're gonna re-kick it from five yards further back. So Stewart will kick away from the 35 yard line. So Stewart will kick away from the 35. See if the ball stays on the tee this time. Get a line drive kick 
falling exactly at the 25 yard line. He pitches it back. Now sending it back to Omeek Watterson. That's a smart move. Watterson lowers the shoulder and gets up to the 39 yard line. You can see the strategy on that kick for Stewart. Once he placed that ball on the tee, he sprinted back <laughs> about five yards, said let's go, and immediately ran back and kicked up all the way before it even had a chance to he fall off the tee. He wasn't trying to waste any time. A little bit of a mental mistake there for Noah Olawu, who held the ball for even a few seconds before giving it back to Amik Watterson. If you're going to do that, do it immediately. Or Amik Watterson's about a foot and a half to your right. Just let him pick it up and, and do and his let thing. Him go, yep. Rockton's looking to get back to how they were playing in the first half. Just that ground and pound, five to eight yards on every every play. And swallow up a lot of clock. Mm -hmm. Of course, now the clock is against the boxers as they go five wide. Amik Watterson, the man in motion. He'll get the end around give. Watterson lowers the shoulder again and takes the contact to get up to the 45 yard line. And that brings up a fourth and about five. Third and five. Third and five. Four wide plus a tight end. Now Medley gives off to Amik Watterson right up the middle. He's going to be tangled up immediately and spin forward for a gain of about three yards. Yeah, it's going to be a couple yards short. It'll be fourth and two. So this is an interesting call. I don't think the boxers are really in a position to punt here. Let's see Watterson and still gaining yards after contact, even though it's only three yards. He was hit probably a yard deep in the backfield and spinning forward. Now for wide, Medley going to keep it himself. Amik Watterson's the extra blocker, and Medley has the first down. And I will say, with all fairness, one of the challenges of the turkey hat challenge is wearing a headset around the hats. Uh, I have had to abandon my pumpkin pie hat because I couldn't keep the headset around my ears. You couldn't balance it on? It's a lot easier on the sidelines with Newbie because he's just holding the microphone. Oh, yep. You have a third hat you're going to bust out? Or you just only got two? I've only got two plus the sunglasses. <laughs> It's uh, an occupational hazard. It's an excellent way to put it by Mark Lindy, the general manager of Brockton Community Access. Boxers on first and 15 after the penalty. We'll go four wide. Watterson to Medley's left. Medley in the shotgun. Screen pass backwards to Watterson. Now he's going to get to the original line of scrimmage and a couple of additional yards all the way up to the 45 of the Trojans. And that's going to bring up a second and about seven to go. 3.35 to go. And that was another, another play of Watterson running the ball after the contact. And John McMasters is slow to get up again as he trots to the Trojan sideline. See the second or third time that he's been shaken up on a play. Now Medley going to keep it himself and turn up field right between the hash marks and he's got a short gain of about four yards. It will be a fourth. Or a third and four. Five wide clean backfield for Devontae Medley. Trips to the near side. Now Meek Waters and the man in motion. Medley gonna keep it himself and be hit immediately at the line of scrimmage. Might even be a loss of one. Good work there by the Trojan defense that brings up a fourth down. And you see Corey Abelard here just step up linebacker position, fill the hole. Just doing what he's supposed to do. Some good football right there. Medley back to pass on fourth and four. And he's got Trey Shula Hall on the far side. Good for a boxer first down. That's a big fourth down conversion. Keeping the hopes alive for Brockton. They need to walk away with some kind of score here. 
Shul Hall, one of the most consistent boxer receivers. And when you say that, that's kind of scary to think about. Now Medley in a lot of trouble. He's going to bob and weave up for a gain of about two. It'll be second and eight. You see Medley was looking deep there. Five wide, Watterson again the man in motion. He gets the end around give. Amik Watterson trying to turn the corner on the near side. He is hit and brought down at the 31 yard line. And that brings up another third and longer. It's about third and six. That was Anthony Morrison on the stop for the Trojans. Morrison playing both ways, the star running back. Now Medley back to pass in trouble. He dumps it off to Amik Watterson. He's in trouble, flag thrown in from the secondary. Interesting to see what the, it's gonna be holding against the boxers. So they will get another try at it. I'll be hit five yards back. Brockton High marching band is starting to party on the far side. VR is going to decline the penalty here. It'll be fourth and about eight to go. And with a minute to go in the third quarter, Brockton down three touchdowns. So again, needing a long fourth down conversion. Trips to the far side, Medley in the gun, Watterson to his right, Medley back to pass on fourth and eight, heading to the near sideline for Navon Reed, Navon Reed trying to get to the end zone, he's going to be stopped at the one yard line, the big wide receiver for the boxers comes up with a huge fourth down conversion. You couldn't ask for anything better, he was there at the sticks just looking to get the first down on the hitch, broke free and Got, got around two tackling Trojans and eventually brought down at the one by Jacob Spear. And Watterson with the touchdown. Watterson's second touchdown of the day. Brings the boxers back within a couple of scores with 19 seconds to go in the third quarter. Again, nothing fancy, just Amik Watterson right, right up, up the, the gut. Middle. Watterson, by far the top leading scorer for Brockton this season, and the extra point wide to the right. So we remain at 28 to 13. 19 seconds to go. Amik Watterson's 18th touchdown on the year. Sheesh. And he's also got uh, two two-point conversions. Yeah, it looks like if they're looking to complete this comeback, they're going to need a two-point conversion in this game. Yeah, not to further pound the stats, but. Amik Watterson coming into this game had scored a hundred points on the season and is brought down at the 36 yard line. The next closest on the boxers is Isaiah Laguerre. He's only got 10 touch, only Lester has 10 touchdowns on the air. Devontae Medley with five, Navon Reed with four. And then a couple of boxers with three. Tenorio has converted 23 extra points, well, 24, including the first one today. Yeah, Meek is a great player. He's a player that every coach wants, someone that can just do whatever needs to be done on the field, take over the game. 
to give to Willie Lombard. Speaking of powerful running backs who can do whatever they want on the field, and he is up to the 50 yard line and a Trojans first down. Quick pitch. Lombard quick to get to the outside. And he was knocked out by Achi Winodi. It has started to rain once again here. Pitch to Lombard again, now the opposite direction. He's got a gain of about five. Well, they're gonna mark him shy. It'll be about second and six and a half to go. And we have reached the end of the third quarter. It is 28 to 13, the Bridgewater Random Trojans uh, winning over the Brockton Boxers in the 10th annual Cape Cod Cafe Cup. And we are going to bring you the fourth quarter right after this. Cape Cod Cafe is where the bar pizza is perfected. 10 inch made to order pizzas baked in the original classic pan with cheese and toppings that stretch all the way to the edge. Since 1939, the Jamulis family recipe has never changed and it never will. Cape Cod Cafe, 979 Main Street in Brockton, plus Bridgewater in Reno. And now find our frozen pizzas at local supermarkets. Just ask your grocer for the Cape Cod Cafe, home of the world's most famous bar pizza. We are here back with the fourth quarter of the Cape Cod Bowl between the Bridgewater Random Trojans and the Brockton Boxers. We've got the dueling of the brass now on the sidelines as the Bridgewater Random marching trombones. And the rain has come back and it's coming back heavy. The end around give to Morrison. So the Trojans' rotation has really, really worked well today against the Boxers, especially in this kind of grounded pound game where we've seen maybe a half a dozen passes yeah. total between the two teams. A lot I mean, of yeah, running. it's amazing to have running backs that deep to where you can just cycle them in and out whenever you need to. Lombard right up the middle. He gets to the outside into the open field. Another and touchdown. touchdown. Bridgewater Raynham, 58 seconds into the fourth quarter. And just as we talked about that rotation, the play set up by the Morrison run to the outside. Yep. Billy Lombard right up the middle, finding the hole and getting to the end zone. Let's take another look. Right up the Finds middle, the gets seam. through a couple of tacklers. And no one's catching Willie Lombard in open field. Wide open field for William Lombard. Another one to add to the great senior year of Willie Lombard. Liam Stewart to attempt the extra point to, I'd say pretty much put this game away. The kick is up and the kick is good. 35 to 13, the Trojans. Yeah, I mean, anything can happen, but I think it's safe to say with that touchdown, they put themselves in a good uh, position to win this game. The destruction of the Brockton Boxers, especially that, that high-powered offense that we talked so much about. I mean, Amik Watterson, 100 points scored coming into this game in just 10 games. Well, let, me, let me fix myself there. Nine games because he missed uh, one and three quarters due to a concussion. Isaiah Laguerre, who has not seen any action today. Navon Reed has had a good game. But Devin Forts, uh, Trey Shula Hall have mostly been held quiet. Falling forward across the 35 to the 36 is Amik Watterson. The box is looking here to score quick. Try to get the ball back. A 
Thanksgiving football always gets uh, a ton of media attention in Massachusetts and this game in addition to being broadcast on Brockton Community Access and Bridgewater Television on 1530 WVBF Dominic Damiano the folks over there and four deep sports now a forward pitch kind of a shovel dump off good for a gain of four no huddle again now second and six to go for the boxers looking to start quickly moving the ball downfield and turn something into points now up to the outside for Navon Reed doesn't connect and it's third and six Hadley just a little bit too high for the big wide out for the boxers. Yeah, it looks like he had him open at first and he just waited a little too long. Big third and six coming here for the boxers. Extra blockage to the left. Medley on a kind of a delayed snap. Now Omik Watterson up ahead. A short gain of about two, two and a half yards. It'll be another fourth and about four to go. And again, you get the extra blocking to the left. Now, two of them went across the offensive line to try to get and create a hole on the right side. But Amik Watterson was so far ahead of him by that point. He blew up his own play. Trips to the Here near side. Go. Medley to pass on fourth down. He's got Devin Forth through the open hands. A flag thrown in late from deep in the secondary. So we await the penalty call. It's gonna, it looks like it's gonna be pass interference on the Trojans. I don't know, I, I didn't see it. I think it might, be a, late, take it might be a late hit. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, the pass interference on Oluwu, who was not the intended receiver. It's gonna be called against both number six, Tyler Newman, and number 32, John McMasters. So it's a free first down and a big one at that for the Brockton Boxers. Oh yeah, they just that escaped the That would have been a turnover turn on downs. Five wide, trips to the far side. Medley in a clean backfield. Matt Medley back to pass. Moving and keeping around. himself. And we thought about throwing it as he approached the line of scrimmage and said, busts up for a gain of about nine. It will be second and one. He had to get it done with his feet there. He couldn't see anybody open, and that's a good read and a good play by a young quarterback. Second and about two after the spot. Now to Amik Watterson right up the middle. Amik Watterson threw a hole into the secondary. He's down at the 20. And that's the Amik we're used to seeing this game. He's gonna keep doing that and the boxers have to go full no huddle offense, I think, for the remainder of this game. Right there, Medley quick to uh, Watterson who found the hole. Now to pass over Deep. the middle for Navon awesome. Reed, touchdown boxers! That's a big big. Medley handling the clean exactly. snap immediately. Firing it off to Navon yeah, Reed over the middle. Yeah, beautiful pass right over the middle. Got time to set his feet and place the ball perfectly. And not even close in coverage was Ryan Crookshank, the senior defensive back. It's not over. Oh, going the for Foxes the two points. Going for the two to try to get it to just two touchdowns and extra points. Now Medley in the gun. Waterson to his left. The two-point conversion attempt. Oh, the, direct the direct snap statue. to Waterson. He walks into the end zone. And the two-point conversion. Is good. Medley faking the high snap. Get the defense thinking it's a fumble. The Tom Brady special. Oh, yeah. And Watterson Maybe. just has one hand on him the entire way into the end zone. Well, we're back to a 14 point ball game 35 21. Yeah. 
Meek Watterson to kick it away. The low kick, bouncing, handled by Anthony Morrison, cutting Cuts back it. across oh. the field and brought down at the 31 yard line. Well, the name of the game for the boxers on this drive, Lester. Turn Stop over. Willie and Lombard and return. Anthony Morrison. Don't focus on anyone else six. except for those two guys. They've been killing it all day. A if seven. I was a defensive coordinator, I'd be saying the same thing. Watch Number five and six. watch 15. Well, you can Brown. see the weather has affected some of our four-legged friends <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> it's kind of gotten a little bit chilly with the wind. It's dropped about five degrees since kickoff. And there is a very good boy wearing Lombard and Morrison sweater. in the backfield. To get to Lombard, he's tripped up. Kind of a dangerous play as he was hit down around the knee area right into a helmet of one of, I think, one of his own linemen. Let's take a look at what happened there. The give to Lombard, and uh, he got tripped up right there by uh, Rubo. Who was trying to create a block and get some leverage by spreading out his feet and getting Lombard with the left leg. Now the, the pitch out, out of to the power eye. pitch out to Lombard across the forty to the forty one. For and uh, depending on the spot, they haven't moved the chains yet. And I think they're gonna mark him a few inches shy. They are. It's going to be third and one. Let's see where that ball was marked down. Kind of tough to see from this angle, but. Oh. And now they're giving him the first down. Generous spot to the 42 yard line. Now 7.20 to go. In the fourth quarter, Brockton chasing two touchdowns. Power eye, one lone wide out to the near side. Morrison splits out to the far side. Now the pitch to Lombard. He's going to be caught at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and ten. Morrison, rather, moving to the outside to pick up uh, an extra block. And Lombard just completely swallowed up by Diamond Blakely, number 34, in white for the boxers. In the power eye, three guys in the backfield behind Austin Hartzell, who's under center. The lone wideout would be Matthew Buron to the near side. He's working against Adrian Fillet. The give to Lombard up ahead oh, and in from William Lombard into the open field. And it's another touchdown for the senior running back for Bridgewater Raynham, William Lombard, putting on a show here on Senior Day. This is a great way to go out in the season. Plus yard run. run, getting through every member of the Brockton Boxers on his way. Nothing fancy, just right up the gut. 174 yards so far for William Lombard. Meanwhile, Three touchdowns. the extra point is up and good for Liam Stewart. It is 42 to 21. The Trojans doubling up the Boxers, and they now lead by three scores with 6-10 to go. And there you see Willie. Tired after that run, he would can't go after the kickoff, but he's earned an extra slice of pumpkin pie. Done. <laughs> really, just an amazing game by him. Oh, speaking of pumpkin pie, I'm gonna see if I can try to leverage this over the headset. Yeah, I think you just gotta get the balance act going. Looks good. You know what? We're sticking with it. The pumpkin pie hat has returned. Stewart 
to kick away from the 40 as the sun starts to break through once again. It's been a wild weather one. Now Amik Watterson backing up, feels it cleanly at the 12. Amik Watterson up the middle, he finds a hole. Amik Watterson's got one man to beat. Amik Watterson into the open field oh, to the 20, the back. 10, and a touchdown. Boxers with 5.55 to go. No and Amik Watterson said, hold field. up, hold up. This game is not done. Let's take a look at that. A nice kick, high end over end. Watterson had to back up to get to it, and he found a hole right there when he got around the tackle. He beats Stewart there, throws the stiff arm to create separation, and Amik Watterson at that point was seeing nothing but the green of the end zone. And that's just one of your playmakers just making a play right there, right when you need it. And that's a little bit of anything you can do. Willie Lombard, I can do better. He's yes, got a hat trick is. today too. Marcelo Tenorio to attempt the extra point. The ball is snapped, the kick is up, and the kick is good. We are back to a 14 point game after that. That's been a wild fourth quarter. Oh, yes it has. And like you said, Willie scores a touchdown, busting open this game, and Amik, the very next play, comes back and brings it within two touchdowns. Watterson's 19th touchdown of the year. He's scored 118 points on the campaign for the senior running back for Brockton. Transplant from Tennessee, joining the boxers in his sophomore season. And you gotta imagine Coach Peter Colombo is glad that Amik Watterson has spent three seasons with the Brockton Boxers. And the senior running back will now kick we off. we got six to the left, looking like it might be an onside. Oh, and it, it is. It is. It doesn't go 10 yards. Boxers can't touch it. Oh, and there it is. That's it. Let's see if they got it when it was at nine yards. That seems to be what Buran is saying on the sideline. There might even be a flag on the play. Brockton saying they got it after the 10 yards. Still players pointing back and forth depending on what color jersey they're wearing. That was smart by the Brockton players. As they were waiting for the ball to go 10 yards, it was almost as if they were boxing out the Bridgewater players waiting for it. And it is going to be a Trojan ball as they mark it at about nine and a half yards where the boxer touched it. A little too eager. It was shielded well. Yes, it was. The, the boxers had maybe five guys around the ball. And there was only one Trojan. Let's take a, another look. Onside kick perfectly placed. You got Boxer scrambling to get out of the way of it. And it seems like he just got yeah, a little too impatient. Diamond Blakely, who just didn't want any of the Trojans to sneak in from behind him and grab it. And now they're facing the struggle of trying to stop Willie and Pat Morrison again. And you're working against the clock. Clock rolling with 5.40 to go. Quick run by Morrison. Second and five to go with the clock rolling 515. Now on the clock, power eye formation. No doubt it's gonna be a run to either Morrison or Lombard here. They give to Lombard up the middle, spinning close to a first down. It'll be about a yard shy. It'll be third and one. And the clock will go to about four and a half before this ball is snapped. Nothing fancy there. It's a nice handoff by Hartzell going up the middle. A lot of clock management now for the Trojans as they look to wrap up yet another Cape Cod Cafe Cup victory. Hartzell in the center and the power eye. Right. 
to give to Lombard. Cutting to the outside, he's got a first down and more. Willie Lombard now brought down by Diamond Blakely. He's got to have cracked 200 yards by now, I think. Ball spotted at the 16 yard line. Above 200 yards on the day. That was a great way to go out in your final game in high school football. Power I again now, 345 to go in counting. Hartzell under center. They give to Morrison cutting up the field. He's got a gain of about seven on the play. It'll be second and about three. And Hartzell coming off a good, a good growing season as the sophomore quarterback. Now Brockton, Brockton will start to burn their timeouts on a second and about five. Morrison getting to the 10. Starting to run their timeouts. You see Coach Dan Ron there getting his 200th win at the helm of the Trojans this season. And the multiple time state champion Trojan cheerleaders competing nationally as well. Got the ponchos on. As the rain has died down for the moment, but it's been kind of off and on, and when it has been raining, it's been fairly heavy driving rain. Along with that wind, I can't express enough. That wind is no joke. Give to Lombard, he's down to the two. Well, they're going to spot him at the one, Willie Lombard. Looking for his fourth touchdown on the day. He's trying to, it's like him and Amiga trying to play a game. This Lombard brought down at about the yard and a half. It'll be first and goal to go for the Trojans. Power Ibe, you're on the lone wideout to the far side. Hartzell gonna keep it himself. And he's gonna be short. Seems like he just couldn't get a push. The Brockton defensive line just stood him up. All right, Rubo, Morrison, and Lombard in the backfield. Again, Hartzell going to carry it, and this time he gets across the line for a touchdown. Austin Hartzell gets on the board. And I don't want to say that should pretty much wrap it up because we saw what happened last time I said something to the effect. But under two minutes, three touchdowns. I think the BR is going to walk away with this one. Hartzell getting the push from his three running backs with 158 to go. It's 48 to 28. The Trojans on top. William Stewart to attempt yet another extra point. He's six for six so far. High snap. Ball is snapped. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Seven for seven so far today for Liam Stewart. Scored a, a touchdown and an extra point by himself. You too, man. Happy day, 
Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, the BR coaching staff has abandoned ship up here in the press box, so. Safe to say the Trojans are going to walk away, have a nice Thanksgiving dinner after this W. Stewart to kick it away. Ball bouncing back to Noah Olawu, fielded at the 11. He's going to split up field and be brought down at around the 24 yard line with a buck 52 to go. BR looks uh, and will take a distinct advantage in the overall record in the Cape Cod Cafe Cup. I believe the Trojans are 6 and 3 so far in the series. I'll have to fact check myself there, but I think you might be right. I believe it's six I think and three. You might be right. <laughs> so they would move to seven and three with this victory. And get to hoist that Cape Cod Cape Cod Cafe Bowl trophy. Trojans taking a timeout. Well, one of the traditions in this game is you pick an MVP from both sides. There is zero question who that would be. For the Trojans, it's got to be Willie Lombard. Lombard. <laughs> and Amik Watterson. North of 200 yards on the day for Lombard. Three touchdowns and Amik Watterson, three touchdowns. He's got to be close to 200 yards as well. LPS. Jeff Fowler at the helm of Bridgewater Television. Manning the end zone camera on the far side of the field. Braving the elements down there. Wind, he rain. He is a trooper for that. That wind is coming in crazy. They can get the flag in the same shot. Uh. Five wide for the boxers who are going with the never say die attitude. High snap, give to Amik Watterson to the outside. Amik Watterson picking up a blocker. He's got a first down with 1.45 to go. And another whistle and uh, clock stops. There's John Luck who is normally up here with me in the booth. Manning the sidelines. Watterson going to throw, looking for Reed. He's got a name oh, on Reed and out of bounds. Sidelines. At the 24 yard line. A little bit of trickery here. But maybe a little too little too late, too late. Lester, for it the It seems boxers. like they got all the answers right now, but like you said, it's too little too late. And what can't this kid do? Meek Watterson, the kicker, the punter, the star running back. Medley to pass, looking for Trey Shula Hall. It falls Was that ball tipped? incomplete. Yeah. It might have been tipped right at the line. See if that ball was indeed tipped. No, it just kind of came wonky out of his hands. Might be a little bit slippery from the wet field. So we've seen Jeff Fowler, John Luck. We've got uh, in the truck, of course, uh, Brian Berard, Mike Moriello, among many others. This is a huge production crew. Amazing job. Shout out to the production crew. Now Shula Hall on the outside. He's knocked down. Inbound, so the clock will roll with 1.10 to go. On the BCA side, of course, at the helm, Mark Lindy. And the general manager, we've got Mike Simmons braving the elements on top of the booth. Phil Filipitas in the crowd. You see him there. There's Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another oh. delivery to the viewers of Brockton. There he is. Hi, Mike. There's Phil, Phil Filipinas, sports producer at BCA. Watterson in motion, ball's going to him. Watterson finds the hole. Amik Watterson up to the four yard line. The clock 
Stops with a minute to go. Number two of the boxes, Watterson. Clock running. Amik Watterson looking to add to a phenomenal season and maybe get just one more score on the year. Medley passing. Complete touchdown to Trey Shula Hall. Don't call it a comeback. We're back to <laughs> a, a back. two possession game with 45 seconds to go. The play action give to Noah Olawu. Shula Hall easily getting around John Buckley. Crazier things have happened, Lester. Back <laughs> in the Lynn Classical game up at the Manning Bowl. It was a similar situation. The Rams of Lynn Classical were up a couple scores in the final minute. Brockton tied the game, and now a two-point conversion is good. Amik Watterson recovers the fumble. That's his 120th point on the year. Actually, no, he had the two-point conversion earlier, so that's his 122nd. Yeah. Point on the day on so the So what year. was what happened at the So the Brockton Classic? Brockton was down two scores with a minute and a half to go. They scored and eventually tied it up. Lynn Classical had a 65 yard touchdown pass as time expired to take the walk off victory. 48 to 40 was the final score in a crazy one. Well, you never know what's gonna happen here. And this, the motto of that game was, it's not impossible, but highly unlikely. I like that. I would say the same here. It's a now 13 point ball game, 49-36 with 44 seconds to go. Brockton stacking six to the near side. Now switching sides is Randy Jean Francois. The onside kick takes a couple of bounces, fielded cleanly. And that should do by it. By Luke Payton. Brockton does have two timeouts, but I don't think that they will burn them here and force the Trojans to get a first down. Not that it would matter because they could take a knee on a potential third down and burn out the remainder of the clock. But if I'm Coach Biron, I'm trying to get Lombard just one more, one more touchdown. To break the tie between him and uh, to me. A, to break the tie, and B, to send them off into the sunset on a very high note. They line the up in victory Trojans, formation. Indeed, line up in victory formation. Hartzell under center. Fumbles he lost the, the ball. ball. It bounces back between the center's legs. It's not a clean ending with... 30 seconds to go, they'll take one more knee. And Brockton's not going to elect to use their remaining two timeouts. One final knee, and the clock will expire. Your final score is going to be 49 to 36. The Trojans once again getting the better of the Brockton boxers Up on Thanksgiving lead, Day. Seven and three. Seven and three for the Trojans in the overall Thanksgiving series. The Boxers, meanwhile. Me too. Uh, eight and two, excuse me. Uh, now Ooh. for the Trojans, the Boxers fall to two and eight in the Cape Cod Cafe Cup. And again, the players of the game, and we'll talk about their performances. Willie Lombard and Amik Watterson. Lester. For the PR side, Willie Lombard, the senior running back. Three touchdowns, north of 200 yards. Talk about his performance in what has been a sputtery BR offense all season. It's just the perfect way you would like to end your season. 200 plus yards, like you said, three touchdowns. He had the ball at all times in this during this football game. He could do what he wanted. They were just trying to get him open field and move the ball around. They know his speed, they know what he can do. And they're just using it to their advantage. And meanwhile, for the boxers, Amik Watterson with three touchdowns. He 
Has to be somewhere around 200 yards as well for the boxers and having a phenomenal senior season as well. He's got 122 points scored for like the Brockton boxers. The whole offense runs through him is what it feels like. When he's good, they're good. So the teams line up at the 50-yard line for the presentation of the Cape Cod Cafe Cup. And Coach Stan Buran going up to Amik Watterson and giving credit to Lester Credit's where due. credit is due. And Amik Watterson by far. And the boxers have had some talented running backs over the years, uh, especially the, the last decade. They've had some great running backs. But Amik Watterson, he's something special. He's up there. He's out there for one of the, one of the grades for sure. We await the presentation of the players of the game, one for each side, and then the presentation of the Cape Cod Cafe Cup to the victors, the Bridgewater Raynham Trojans. Another great tradition, the both sides getting MVP. 49 to 36, again the final score here in this one, with BR moving to eight and two in the all-time Cape Cod Cafe Cup series against the Brockton Boxers. Thanks, Kevin. So we can hear them giving the Brockton MVP to Amik Watterson. No question there, three touchdowns. Somewhere around 200 yards. And there's the presentation to William Lombard, number five for the Trojans. And as Coach Dan Buran just said, over 200 yards, three touchdowns. And the bowl, baby. The presentation of the bowl to the Bridgewater Random Trojans captains. Number 56, Ryan McCallum. And number 74, Kyle Hess, accept the trophy on behalf of the Trojan. Enjoy this win, boys. Bring that trophy back in one piece. <laughs> Dan Buron gets yet another victory for the Trojans. North of 200 wins in his career as the Trojans lift the cup. And we get ready to go off to dinner. 49 to 36 is your final score. The Trojans moving to eight and two in the all-time series against the Brockton Boxers here on Thanksgiving Day. The Boxers, a good performance, especially by Meek Watterson, but can't get it done here at Bridgewater Random High School. They move to two and eight in the all-time series. Five and six on the season for Brockton, six and five for the Trojans to end the 2019 campaign. For everyone uh, among many other things, uh, tradition's been mentioned, Lester, and we've got a number of people who are no longer with us in this game. Uh, I'd like to dedicate, and we would like to dedicate to John P. J. Miller, uh, who unfortunately succumbed to cancer uh, over the summer, um, joining um, in that battle with Brockton Mayor Bill Carpenter, um, who also unfortunately passed away earlier this summer, and we'd like to give a special shout out to them, uh, their families, the Carpenter family, and the Miller family, especially the young son, uh, JP3. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us in this presentation of Bridgewater Television, BTV, Brockton Community Access. For everyone here, my broadcast partner, Lester, it's been a pleasure bringing you Thanksgiving football in the 10th annual Cape Cod Cafe Cup. Again, your final score, 49-36. to 36. The Trojans getting the victory, and we send you off in loving memory of John P. J. Miller, Jr., 1970 to 2019. Thank you for joining us, folks, and we will see you next season.